everyone's quitting. No one's going back to work. It's a permanent exit from the workplace. Is the great resignation real? This is the question I asked myself a few weeks ago when almost everyone seemed to be covering this topic. My answer is no. However, I think what my research into this topic uncovered was a lot more interesting. Let's dive in. I think one of the best ways to think about the great resignation is through the lens of Martin Gurry's book, Revolt of the Public. His book dealt with what he was seeing as a new way of organizing through the internet related to the Arab Spring in the late 2000s and early 2010s. What he was seeing was that people were coming together around shared causes, but what made these causes unique was that they didn't have any clear positive aims. These groups didn't want to improve anything specifically. What they were instead was aligned around a common repudiation of a central idea or general group of people. For example, people were against the government against the establishment, against a very specific certain president. Now, we're much more used to this. We see many political parties around the world organized solely around their repudiation of the other party or other groups of people. And I think this is what is happening with this great resignation. A couple of weeks ago, a friend sent to me a chart from the Reddit group Anti-Work. He said, this is tripling. Is this anything real? When you go into the group, you find what Gurry would tell you you'd expect is a wide range of different perspectives. There's anger against underpayment of low-wage workers. There's anger from knowledge workers who are being told they have to return to work. There's anger from people that are being forced to be vaccinated. It's really scattered and all over the place. However, they're all aligned around being broadly anti-work, except work is such an ambiguous and flexible topic that it can mean pretty much anything. You can be anti-work and be an anti-capitalist, or you can be anti-work and just be anti-bad managers. It's basically a catch-all for anyone who's interested in being against work, which most people have some resentments about work. I think what's more interesting in which the media and other people are not exploring is three deeper trends. First, people are returning to the office and finding it really awkward after sitting in chairs like this doing remote work with sweatpants on. They feel like they need to return back to normal, performing the role of work, taking things seriously, dressing in serious clothes. It all feels weird because that kind of disappeared a bit. It became much more focused on work product and less on performance because everyone was getting a pass. And now it just feels weird for people to go back full on into that total worker mode. Second, I think people are more willing to talk about work. And I've seen this firsthand. I've been writing about our relationship with work since 2017, but it was not until 2020 that more and more people started reaching out to me and being willing to talk to me. In addition to talking with me, they were also having discussions with their spouses, their friends, and their families across generations for the first time. There was a certain amount of shame prior to the pandemic of talking with work, especially if you had a good job, right? You shouldn't, you should be grateful for what you have. I was told this many times, like you shouldn't be seeking to escape your job into self-employment. You should be happy with what you have. You have a decent salary. Now, people are much more comfortable to have these conversations and see that there are deeper issues with work and maybe it's not a perfect setup for everyone. Finally, I think something really deeper is happening. It's a softening of the judgment of others who are the ones that often hold us back or at least our perception of what other people think. If we quit our job and don't have another job, what will people think of us? Are we losers? Are we bad people? Uh, are we unproductive? Are we lazy? All these ideas stuck in our head really lead to a very shameful feeling that keeps many people trapped in their jobs. I'm seeing people I never would have seen now say, 
I'm going to quit my job without another one. I just need time to reflect on my life and figure out what I want going forward. This is new. This is also small and growing. I think this is probably the more interesting thing to watch rather than this great quitting, right? There's this great resignation. If you look into the data, it's much more specific to like the retail sectors, the construction sectors, the transportation sectors, sectors which have been directly really shaken up from the pandemic. Um, bans on restaurants, financial flows, stimulus payments to people, subsidies to those people in those industries and the workers. That hasn't really shaken out yet. So I'd need more data, more months of evidence to really see that there's this broad-based rejection of work. I'm not seeing it yet, but it's going to be interesting and really fun to keep watching. <laughs>